Do you ever suffer from stash guilt? The idea that you might have too much fabric? Well, if that happens, just go out and buy more fabric until it passes. Well, no, actually tonight we're gonna make a stash busting quilt that will use up some of those pre-cut strips that you might have laying around. So, let's get to it. You know what I love about an easy quilt? That it's so mindless, you can just make it and then look at the beautiful fabric. And the cutting instructions on this pattern are basically two lines. Take your pre-cut strips and cut them into smaller rectangles. I love that. So now I'm just gonna find some of my favorite fabrics, ones that didn't make the cut into earlier quilts, and cut them up into rectangles. And what's also nice is that this pattern can be made in different sizes, since it's the same easy block. Kind of like that orange. The one thing I have to remind myself is that I need a lot of different colors, because I tend to get into a rhythm of using blue and green, because those are my favorites. Of course, if you don't have a lot of pre-cut strips laying around, that means you're very efficient with the use of your fabric. But you can also cut two and a half inch strips out of fabric that you already have laying around. Scrap guilt is actually different than fabric hoarding. Fabric hoarding results when you have a piece of fabric that you love so much that you're really just afraid to use it. Scrap guilt comes when you have that piece of fabric or two that doesn't really fit your style or really what you're working on, but you just feel guilty getting rid of it. I mean, don't you think? I feel like fabric hoarding is totally different, but you might have a different take on that. Are you guilty of fabric hoarding or scrap guilt? Let me know by leaving it in the comments below. I always love seeing what y'all are talking about. I remember this piece of fabric, actually. This was from fruit strips. No, fruit slices. I think the trick with a scrap busting quilt is to not overthink the colors, but we could think of it more like rainbow vomit. Rainbow vomit looks like this. Or a color explosion, or whatever pretty metaphor you want to use. The problem with scrap guilt is like, when do you stop, right? Like, do I save this? Or do I save these? I probably will save that, because I'll feel guilty getting rid of that. I'll probably save that too. Maybe for a stash buster, a mini stash buster. All right, I still have a lot of fabric to cut, but I've got a good start on some split rail blocks, so we're gonna see how this goes together. The split rail quilt pattern is so easy to make because there are no matching points. That is fantastic, especially if you're a newer quilter or somebody has been watching and thinking about becoming a quilter, this is a great one to start with. So what I'm gonna do is just randomly take my rectangles and sew them together in groups of two. The idea here, it would be not to have two of the same colors next to each other. So I'm gonna try to keep it as random as possible. Eventually coming together with four strips to make one of the blocks. And the whole time you're sewing, you could think, oh, as I use up my fabric, what a great incentive to use more. And I have a coupon code that you can use for more fabric. It's in the description box below. So go check that out. All right, so I have a group of two of my rectangles sewn together, and I could keep going until I've all done my fabric or all done with my piecing potion, but I'm excited to show you what this looks like. So we're gonna take these rectangle strips and sew them together in groups of two until we have four strips to make our split rail block. And even better, since none of these pieces cross over each other, I don't have to iron the block until the very end, which is so good. The best thing about mindless sewing is I can just sit here and piece these blocks, eat my popcorn, drink my sparkle juice, and think about all the sweet comments you all leave on YouTube. Well, most of them. And I love to see everybody chiming in there. So for instance, Smitten Kitten, I love that you're always commenting on the videos and your comment on the bag about how you felt like you couldn't show your work in public, you totally should. Now, I haven't met you, but I kind of feel like you're an amazing person. Seems like you have a good sense of humor anyway. So be sure to leave comments on there and help each other out as well, because I think that's what's great about quilters, is we love to talk about quilts. Okay, so here's a sign that this is a good quilt. I ran out of bobbin thread right here. I finished my seam and it ran out half an inch after my seam. You know how that normally happens, right? You start the seam and it runs out a half of an inch into it. I think that means that this is gonna be a great quilt. Okay, I've got a good stack of blocks going together, so I'm gonna do a little pressing so we can see what our first row looks like. Since there's not any matching seams or intersections or anything like that, it doesn't really matter which directions you press the seams of your blocks. I tend to press them all to one side, but if you wanted to, you could press them open. I'm sure that would be great. Another thing I love about reading the YouTube comments is when you guys cheer each other on. I love that because this is what this is, right? A community, especially you, Noah. I'm so honored that I inspired you to make your first quilt and that you even won first place with that. That's amazing. But it also made me so happy to see everybody else congratulating you. So keep up the great work. 
And of course, the questions are fun too. And I try to answer as many as I can, but I notice that you all help each other out with that as well. When it comes to batting, Olivia asked me what kind of batting that I like to use. And I like to use fusible batting because the spray base just kind of gets all over the place and I don't want to have to work my way around pins. And Olivia also asked about how to prevent the tucks on the top of the quilt. And sometimes that happens as well. If you find that you're getting a lot of those tucks, it could be that your free motion foot is a little too low and it's kind of pushing that fabric over. Try raising it up just a bit to see if that helps. You'll know you've raised it up too much if it starts skipping stitches. But anyway, keep up the questions because I love to answer them and I love to see everybody else's answers as well. Okay, well I have a stack of blocks here. Let's see what it looks like when we put it into our first row of our quilt. I have my stack of blocks. They're all beautiful, nice and random in color placement. And I'm gonna lay out the first row. But a split rail is the same block, the only difference is we're rotating it. So one block is gonna go vertical, the next is gonna go horizontal. And I'm just gonna make it random and place them out there. So again, just to point out what's great about this pattern is that there's no matching seams. When I go to sew this seam right here, I don't have any points that I have to match over there. It makes it nice and easy. So I'm gonna sew these together in groups of two, sew the whole row together, and I'll have the first row to my quilt. So I have the first two of the rows put together, and what I want to point out is that the blocks are changing direction, but I'm also alternating between them. So over here, when I started my row, I had my vertical and my horizontal. Well, the next row is going to be the same, except different. We'll have the horizontal and the vertical, so make sure you're laying them out by changing the direction when you're making the quilt. And I had so much fun with the mindless sewing that I've got other rows sewn together, so I'm going to assemble the rest of this quilt and show you what it looks like when it's all finished. And just like that, my quilt top is finished. And I am loving all the different ranges of colors and I think quilting it is gonna be even more fun. So I'm gonna baste this and get to the machine quilting. I'll see you there. So this quilt sandwich is basted and ready to go and I'm so glad I got to use some of that scrap fabric that I've been feeling guilty about. But what I don't feel guilty about is having fun with the machine quilting. I'm planning on doing a lot of fun designs on this quilt with a bright thread. So let's get to it. I'm gonna treat each rectangle as an opportunity to try a different design. I'm gonna start out by quilting a wishbone design and it's a line that angles out. But before I hit the other opposite edge of my block, I'm gonna curve around and loop up diagonal the opposite direction backing up in a loop, and then continuing on. Almost like I'm quilting a cursive L. For the next rectangle, I think I'm gonna do ribbon candy. So the shape almost makes a backwards S going back and forth, or it kind of looks like Hershey Kisses, or maybe I'm just hungry. But I'm gonna quilt that line that curves out and back until I reach the other edge of the rectangle. Of course, I love to add a little pop of texture with just a bit of traveling. Now traveling is quilting along a previously quilted line, but it's easy to do when it's just for a little tiny bit. So starting from one end, I'm gonna quilt a wavy line, go out to a point and backtrack just about a quarter or half of an inch, and then continue quilting that wavy line, going out to a point, backtracking, and continuing my wavy line. And it's this little bit of backtracking that's gonna add a cute little pop of texture. Now if there's one thing that brings up a lot of questions, it's machine quilting. It seems like it's one of those things that intimidate a lot of people, including Frances, who left a comment slash question saying, hope doesn't sound crazy, but she's a little scared to get started on the free motion quilting. This quilt is perfect for practicing free motion quilting because you're just practicing within a defined space. Pick a design, try it out. If you don't like it within that rectangle, then just don't ever do it again. It'll be completely fine. So Frances and anybody else out there that's a little nervous about starting, the best way is just to practice. And I know that's hard to say or hard to do when you just want to be good at it, but load a quilt, start quilting in the rectangles, and by the time you get done, you'll have a beautiful quilt and you'll also feel more comfortable about free motion quilting. Well, I'm gonna try out some other designs on this quilt and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. You know what's better than mindless sewing? Guiltless sewing. And this stash busting quilt is finished. I'm so happy with the color placement. Even though there were some strips in here that I thought maybe might not work, it looks beautiful. The easy to piece pattern was just a great playground to try out all my different quilting designs. I think all in all, it's a win-win. And now that I got rid of all this fabric, you know what that means. I can buy some more, and you can too. I have a coupon code for you in the description box below so that you can replenish your stash, you know, because you never know when there'll be another stash busting quilt. And thank you so much for your comments and questions. Keep them coming, because I love to read them. 
Well, I will see you next time on the Midnight Quilt Show. Until then, happy quilting.